Because it is the greatest sport in the world, and that is the NFL. Uh, running down a couple. The of NFL people. is the greatest sport in the world. Yes, not not NFL. football, not American not football. football. No, just the NFL. Just College NFL. football sucks. It's not. Right. It's not part of the high NFL school football. Thing. Nothing. Yeah, uh, the NFL is what makes football so great. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a. I'm not against college football. I just. I like to watch the highest level of competition, even though I would never be in that level of competition. I just like to watch it. So, but only the NFL football. counts as as the greatest sport. Like yes. the others don't even yes. count as football. They don't even count as football. They're just they're just other. There's the NFL and other. If you would like to disagree with Brian, send a comment down below. <laughs> you would not want to disagree with that, but yes. So we're talking about the NFL, and so let's start it off with um, Josh Gordon, the prolific wide receiver who last year went nuts, had about 1,700 yards, really like 1,650, um, in only 14 games because he was suspended the first two games. Well, apparently he didn't learn his lesson from being suspended the first two games of the season because over the past off season he not only got a DUI arrest but he tested positive for marijuana for the second time so he did was appeal that related to the DUI was he a DUI for the marijuana no or no, was no, it a no, different no. DUI it was separate separate DUI i believe feels so like um, a drunken DUI yeah yeah so not not good <laughs> not good either way but yeah so um, now he appealed the suspension saying that it was only secondhand marijuana inhalation, and so it doesn't count as him actually doing it. Which how I is he going to prove that? Uh, again, yeah, like it's in your system. That's what proves that you were around it. And by the way, you're it a millionaire. You don't have to hang around people. Yeah, and I don't think secondhand really shows up on tests. So I, I'm no. Well, or, or or if there's enough in the air for it to show up on tests, doesn't it also have an intoxicating effect? Isn't that? something people do is sit in a room full of it. So isn't like second hand just another knowledge would anybody just want marijuana? No. Mm, I don't think so. I, I, I honestly don't believe in this second hand excuse. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's probably bullshit anyway. But yeah. I mean. It just, yeah, I, I'm not going to go for it, Josh. I'm not going for it. But you got suspended for the whole year, and um, you screwed a lot of fantasy football owners out there who were hoping you would come back in the middle of the season. Not me, because I don't bank on things like that when I draft, but a lot of people out there. So he was actually drafted in my league on Tuesday. Now he was drafted with the absolute last pick. So, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. But, uh, you know, you kind of screwed some people over there. You especially screwed over your team. You especially screwed over Brian Hoyer, who needs... A helpful, helpful wide receiver like you to make sure that Johnny Manziel doesn't usurp his starting position. But yeah. you know, we really screwed over the kids. The kids. Think the kids of the Cleveland. Kids of Cleveland. Yeah, they have sh crappy teams. I almost said the S word. Okay. But then we're talking to kids, and you shouldn't curse at kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what though? We've been we read on uh, on Cleveland a lot, and. Yeah, the Browns, terrible. Mm -hmm. Indians, terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, even with, with Johnny Manziel, I, I don't see anything going for them. But um, but they, they got LeBron James back. Hold on, hold on. You're skipping. No, no, no. we're not talking about that yet. Why would you we're do not that? talking about that yet? Why would you skip to a story that doesn't happen for another 20 minutes? I didn't know that you had that story. <laughs> you had we ran, we ran show. down what was going on before the show. <laughs> so, okay, you so whatever. push it forward. Push it forward. Let's <laughs> go to the next NFL story. <laughs> and that is um, Seattle, the Seahawks, have been fined $300,000 and are, have had too many camps for next year taken away because of having too physical of practices this past offseason. They are known for liking to put on the pads. Yeah, too physical of practice. With the new bargaining agreement, they are not allowed to go full pads the entire time. They're not allowed to do full con contact drills the entire time. You're only allowed to do it a certain amount of times. And um, apparently they like to go over. Now, this is what I say to that. That's, that's not a competitive thing. That's a safety thing, I'm guessing? I think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. They, they want to cut down on the concussions, and so taking away half the time you get hit should help with that. Okay. Even though concussions are not cumulative, sense. necessarily. Like, if you let your body heal properly from one concussion, you won't necessarily be more susceptible to another concussion. Yeah, but I think the idea is the less time you have risking getting any concussions, the yeah. less likely you are to get any. Yeah, so that's kind of what they say. Now, 
what I say to this is um, they won the Super Bowl last year, so I want every team in the NFL from now on to just get these penalties and fines because, I mean, yeah, you want to be safe with your players, but you also want them to play well, and obviously you cannot prepare your team well to get into the physical play, especially last year. I'm going to just refer back to my favorite team, the Redskins. Last year they could not tackle for crap because Mike Shanahan never wanted anybody to touch anybody in any of the practices, and so what did you have? A bunch of people with you. This year, Jay Gruden's running it. He did tackling drills at one point, and now it seems like they're solid tacklers. So it, it's it's catch-22. You don't want to get your players hurt, but you know what? If they're not performing on the field, what's the point of having them out there? I mean, If you're not actually practicing what they're going to have to do, yeah. it's difficult to, to be sure that they're going to be able to do it right when it comes exactly. down to the, when it comes into the game. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of silly, them finding him, especially 300000 That seems like excessive amount. This is the NFL. Come on. That's true. They make billions of dollars. Who cares? That's especially the for them. When the Super Bowl, when they just won the Super Bowl, they have money galore. Yes, they're, they're not hurting. They're fine. They're fine. And I bet they you all Seattle fans that, are like, "Cool, get, get take away mini camps every year. We don't care as long as we keep winning. That's all we want." So yeah. So, eh, I'm kind of on your side here, Pete Carroll, even though I don't like your franchise very much. That's my bum, look bum, for. Well, that's my look for franchises I don't like. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, so let's take it from there and jump over to the Carolina Panthers. And that is because Cam Newton, uh, in his last preseason game, cracked a rib, actually. Um, now, that's a really painful injury for anybody because it like hurts to breathe when you have a cracked rib. But especially for a quarterback who gets hit in that area a lot and then has to use his, that part of his body, you know, those muscles and everything, to throw the ball. But he says he's going to be ready for week one, so I. I, I wouldn't do it. I would take a couple weeks off just because cracked ribs hurt. I've never had one, but I know. Do they hurt? They hurt. They don't feel good. I'm, that's, I'm just going to go out on a There's a lot that you can do about them, though, to be honest. Like, you, you blend them heal. up, right? Yeah, and, and let, let them heal. heal. Yeah, I mean, he'll have probably a special set of padding there. Um, I remember Donovan McNabb used to always have this special, like, rib protector, especially for the lower ribs. Um, but... It, it, it hurts. I would give myself a week or two off. Uh, now, I mean, I'm not a competitor like that, so I can't blame you for wanting to play, but if it turns out that this becomes a nagging injury throughout the whole year, it's going to hurt your team worse than just missing you for the first game or two. So, I mean, it depends. depends. I mean, I've um, known and heard people that, like, they'll get cracked ribs, and they'll be in pain, but they won't necessarily realize they have a broken rib for, like, weeks. And they'll be like, oh, really? Oh, I just thought it was, like, hurt a little bit. Are they NFL players? Some of them are, uh, like, kung fu masters. Mm. And that's why they didn't realize it, because they're just always in pain from fighting. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. I was like, well, because NFL players, I could see that, too, because it's just like, oh, I got hit hard there, and I keep getting hit there, so that's why it hurts. So, but, yeah, uh, that's a pretty painful injury. So let's move it on and talk about how the Patriots traded away five-time Pro Bowler Logan Mankins. And the reason they traded him, and I thought this was absurd, all these ideas were flying around, because they traded him for a fourth-round pick and for a tight end, Tim Wright. Um, Tim Wright's not anything special. Now, he did do well towards the end of last year, uh, got a little more production going, but nothing special by any meaning of the word. And when you already have Gronkowski out there, I mean, what do you need this guy for? So I thought to myself, I was like, huh, what is going on here? Are they really worried about Gronkowski not coming back from an injury? So this is kind of their way of, of saving themselves because tight ends play a lot into that Patriots passing game. But then I read an article that said Tom Brady was pissed at Logan Mankins. So the real reason they traded him was because he refused to restructure his contract. Now, the reason Tom Brady was pissed that they traded him was because he wouldn't restructure his contract. He came out and said something along the lines of, do you know how many times I've restructured my contract just to, to make sure we have a good team? One of the times I restructured was to give you more money on yours. So what is your problem? Why aren't you being a team player like the rest of us? It's not like we're asking you to be poor. We're just asking you to take a little less money. And um, so that's kind of what happened. So now he went from a perennial pro, uh, Super Bowl contender to the bottom of the bottom in Tampa Bay. So I think uh, Logan Mankins got his just desserts. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's one of those uh, interesting side effects of the uh, of the cap. You know, the team dynamic of we have to stay under cap, so sometimes the big players need to to take a little less money, which we which we hear about in in like basketball all the time, even though basketball doesn't have such a hard cap. Yeah. And like Tom Brady said, even Tom Brady deals with it, you know, so they can have a good team. Tom and Brady's it done it at least three times that I can think of. Uh, now, I'm not the hugest Tom Brady fan, but, you know, it seems like a stand-up guy to me. Yeah. Granted, granted, Tom Brady is probably making up for it with more, a lot more endorsements than most other people are. You know, yeah. with yeah, the very, side very money that he's getting. But still, I mean, it's not like he's asking them to be poor. He's asking them, him to be, you know, a little less of a multimillionaire than he is already. So, I mean, think about it. If you take $2 million off of... I mean, Logan Mankins is the type of player, I don't know what his contract is for sure, but I'm pretty sure he makes between 8 and $10 million a year. So if you make closer to the $7 million, and then your, your, your team can sign uh, another defensive player or, let's say, a wide receiver because they have none in New England. Oh, man, maybe that puts us over the top and we're Super Bowl champions. And that's something you would sacrifice for your team. Now, don't get me wrong, a million dollars is a lot of money no matter which way you cut it. No matter who you are, that's a lot of money. But when you're already getting $7 million, I'm, I mean, do you really need eight? Do you? No, maybe. probably not. I mean, I don't, but maybe maybe he does. Maybe, maybe he does. He maybe he does. I mean, he is an offensive lineman. Maybe that one million like would cut into his food budget. I don't know what he eats. Maybe he likes to go to fancy restaurants and order, you know, hundred thousand dollar steaks. Maybe he's been he bad with the money. He's got a lot of debt. Maybe he was a mafia. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah, when you're the mafia, you got to make sure you got that money for them. You got to have that cash flow rolling, or you never know. So <laughs> that Boston mafia, you know, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. But yeah, so that's uh, that was the Patriots, and let's talk about the last NFL story, and that is everybody's noticed this. This has been uh, just a plague on the preseason, and it, if you haven't noticed it, I don't know. I guess you haven't watched any of the games, and that is because what it, what the refs are doing now. They've been told to spotlight several different defensive infractions, mostly uh, the illegal contact and holding in in the. Uh, on the other side, on the defensive side of the field. I, I didn't know what to call that for a second. But, um, so, if you notice, flags have almost doubled this preseason than they normally do. So, this is... Yeah, there was a lot of flags in, yeah. in the games that I've watched. It was excessive. And this has encouraged one of the most upstanding owners in the NFL, Art Rooney. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit about this guy. I believe this guy was the ambassador for the U.S. to Ireland. So, you know, not some shabby... You know, just, oh, I'm rich, so I'm going to buy a team and do whatever I want. Not not a Daniel Snyder, not a Jerry Jones. Like a really nice guy, you know, one of the like craft-like from the Patriots. So he runs his franchise very, very well. And so when this guy comes out and says, hey, refs, pull it back a little bit. Relax. Let them play a little bit more than you're letting them do. Uh, you know something's wrong because this is one of the guys who writes rules in the NFL. They have the one rule in the NFL where you... You have to interview at least one minority candidate if you have a head coaching job, and it's called the what? The Rooney Rule. This guy sets precedent in the NFL, and if he's coming out and saying, you're taking it too far, there's something wrong. Yeah. Um, wait, but but you said that they were the refs were told to highlight these, or they just yes. have been? In the beginning so of the season, they are going uh, to... The, the competition committee, I believe, um, which is made up of owners. Now, I bet you they, they do this every year. They have points of emphasis uh, every year. Okay, this year we're going to try to crack down on this penalty more, you know, be call it a little more stingy, because like, like holding. Technically, there's a hold on every single NFL play. If you were to microscope, zoom in on all of the offensive and defensive linemen battles, you could probably call a holding on every play. They don't because a lot of that's just letting people play. You only call the more egregious ones. But this year, they were saying, okay, watch that. Now, what they're trying to do, what it seems like to me at least, is open up the offense because offense, everybody wants to see offense. They're trying to kill the defense, make the offense amazing. So... They, they made the point of emphasis this year on illegal contact and holding uh, more than five yards past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, which, so. which I personally don't like. I like to see more. De- I know we all like to see touchdowns. We all like to see big points. But we've been in this trend of defense be- taking the back burner for quite some time. We've seen plenty of high-scoring games. You, you also want to see... The, the defense do well, and you want to see people struggle for those points. And that's, that's what one of the beauties of football is that you 
get some points, but you, they're not super common. They are fought for. They're they not easy. They're not easy to get. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I like to see offense. Granted, I love it. But I also like to see defense. So, let's uh, let's get real, NFL. You're being a little too crazy. I don't appreciate it. Stop being so crazy. Yeah, yeah I don't want it to turn into the, the NBA where it's just, you know, a slew of points, which, you know, basketball is going to have more points anyway, but where just, like, anything gets you points. Oh, you, you looked at him funny. Yep, go to the free, free throw line, get some more points, whatever. Yeah, don't. <laughs> you touched him, silly. Uh, go to the free throw line, get more points, but, yeah. So, well, that was the news from around the NFL. So if you have anything to add to that, anything we missed out, or if you think I'm just stupid on some of the points we pointed out, hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words From Our Face on Twitter, Words From Our Face at gmail.com, and, of course, Google Plus and Facebook. All good places. I think Google Plus is how most people find us, which is interesting. (laughs) 